What is going on SoFi fans? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today I want to talk to you on a possible big acquisition that might be coming SoFi's way in the short term. And to piggyback off of that, they did have their app go down last week. They did give a good apology. They explained exactly what happened on Twitter. But I want to talk what that truly might mean for us as investors. And over and above that, there's been some abnormal activity on the institutional stance. So I want to explain what that potentially does mean for us as investors. And Again, what institutions are really thinking about when it comes to SoFi? Before I get into any of that, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up and subscribe it is always greatly appreciated. With that, let's get right to it. So as I typically have told you in the past, I really like to monitor exactly what's happening on the secondary market and also the dark pool. So this is the transactions from Friday from the secondary market, at least the big ones, anything over 100,000 as far as a single order, which in general is pretty good. Um, but coming from an institutional stance, you do see some abnormal ones though. So this all majority of which 90% of all the secondary market happened after hours on Friday. And for those of you that don't frequently trade, after hours on Friday is normally just a desert. It's Friday evening, people are starting to think about the weekend, people don't necessarily back up the bus. But as you can see on the secondary market, a lot of big orders have been happening. So 4.15 million, 1.08 million. And that's been a little bit more of a common trend, but more specifically on a Friday, this is very abnormal. So you can even compare, this is Thursday's secondary market, the big transactions, and this is Friday. So definitely a lot of abnormal activity that did happen on Friday. And we did have a little bit more of a red day. So maybe people are finally realizing that there is a very, very big value behind so and again, our Q3 earnings speak for themselves. Uh, I think coming from an investor standpoint, this is why I do realize that SoFi is a very long-term investment because based on our earnings, we have absolutely amazing growth. And I think when you do invest, that's exactly what you want to target. Institutions realize that. And you can tell that based on also the latest round of 13 Fs. So 13 Fs are disclosures to the SEC as far as positions. You do see a lot of new green opened positions with the exception of right here, the strategic the ETF that is shorting so far but you do see a lot of other institutions are increasing 300 200 percent and so forth that's always a very positive sign even Jane Street as well which has 2.5 million shares they increased 143 percent and Jane Street for the most part they like to do options so they like to do puts calls as far as hedging and physical shares overall though I have got the sentiment that they are very bearish on the broader market but the fact that they increased their position 140 43% in actual common shares. That is a very, very bullish sign. So I like to see, like I said, what's happening behind the scenes, even with State Street as well, increasing 0.42%, bringing in the grand total of 11.7 million shares of SoFi. So a lot of big money is absolutely loving the discount when it comes to SoFi. And like I said, this is all the secondary market as far as transactions. This is all the dark pool. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the dark pool because it's sometimes linked to where shorts are covering their positions. But similar to what happened with the secondary market, you see a lot of abnormal activity. Once again, this is all the Friday transactions, as you can see. So a lot of big money has been getting in. Nothing over a million in uh, Friday, at least, though. But if you do coincide that with what happened on Friday with the shorts, it goes to show that there is some level of manipulation still. So I'll give you a quick update on this before I touch on the acquisition and all that fun other stuff. So short score is currently 70, higher the number the higher the likelihood of a squeeze happening. Utilization is back at 100%, showing 100% of the available shares too short are currently out. And looking exactly what happened on Friday, shorts did increase their position 2.37 million shares, bringing the grand total to 105.58 million. And short interest right now is 13.41. It did actually go down to roughly about 11%, but prior to that, around maybe four months ago, it was at 25%. So it's gone down a pretty significant amount. Cost of borrow average is 1.26. And this is why I like to look at the dark pool transactions and coincide it with these. So this is why you can look at some of these transactions and kind of cross them off. Be like, this is a short that closed out the position. This is an institution that is now a long on their position. So this is why I like to overanalyze potentially, at least it gives me a good representation of what is happening behind the scenes. But needless to say, there was a lot of 
positive stuff that was coming out from Friday. So take that how you see that. If you do also coincide that with the technical analysis, we are still very much oversold. Number of retail investors are going down though, as you can tell based on the momentum indicator. RSI is currently at 46. Friday though was a little bit more of an abnormal day. We did transition from the higher to the lower percentile of the boiling band. And also we did break below that 50 day moving average. So we a little bit more of a, a bearish uh, situation going on behind the scenes. But again, as Anthony always says, the market does act very irrational. And as I've said, I think one negative aspect of SoFi in the short term, it's a positive and a negative, depending on how you interpret that. They do offer a fairly high APY to customers to incentivize them to come over. But given a higher interest rate environment, banks, this is when they make the most money. So I think right now we're sacrificing revenue, potential revenue at least, over obtaining new customers. So I think it's just one of those things, once we do start transitioning away from obtaining new customers to revenue, this is when we will see substantial amount of growth as far as the, on the price action. My own interpretation, I'm not a financial advisor or anything, but when it comes down to a possible new acquisition, and again, it won't be that much money if you uh, consider it that way, but they've been really investing and wanting their app to be the next level. They want it to be on all in one component and as I mentioned at the very beginning, they did have a little bit more of a hiccup. So they went on this big apology kind of situation and where they broke it down exactly on what they uh, what caused it and things like that. But my experience is that when you have big shutdowns, as they even technically said, as they were updating their server, you don't update these kind of things unless you have a big update potentially coming. And what I mean by that is possibly rolling out options activity. As Anthony's already said, that it is going to be occurring in Q4. And guess what? We have roughly about one month left before they can actually roll it out. And in my opinion, this uh, situation of them shutting down their app and there's that blackout period is because of of them rolling out their options. So once again, they might not necessarily launch it, but they officially put it on there. My own interpretation of that though, so let me know your thoughts on that. In reality though, that is a very big revenue source if they ever do start launching as far as uh, the options activity. And I guess it's not if, it's when. So SoFi is gonna get another big revenue source, hopefully to uh, incorporate it in Q4. Maybe it'll just roll over into the Q1, but generally speaking, I'm very much excited for this update. And over and above that, as far as the possible acquisition, Amit did actually post this. So I think for the longest time, they've been floating around saying that they want to have a all-in-one component, a, a social aspect as well, which in general is fairly good. And what is a fairly good social discussion form? And that is stock twists. Even though it's a little bit more bearish at times and just a lot of uh, spam potentially, but maybe we just bring on Elon, get rid of some of the bots potentially or I don't know, whatever, but still. That aside though, Stock Twits is a very realistic opportunity versus SoFi just starting from scratch potentially. And Amit does put down saying that's around 180 million. That's the last of his uh, knowledge on how much Stock Twits potentially could be worth. Again, if SoFi was to take it over, depending on how good they have been doing, they might be able to get a little bit more of a discount or they might have to pay a little bit more of a premium. So rough estimate being 180 million. In reality, I think that will be a very good thing going forward. Let me know your thoughts on that or if there's a different alternative website that you are aware of that SoFi could definitely purchase because if they're wanting to start from scratch I feel that there would be a ton and I'm going to underline ton there's going to be a lot of these kind of blackouts because to incorporate a whole discussion form into their app that's going to be a lot of big updates that again I know a lot of people weren't happy about this on which it is fairly justifiable you have all your money in one location and you can't access it it's very frustrating especially more so if you are trading and things like that so let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below if you haven't already hit that thumbs up and subscribe is always greatly appreciated if you do like my channel when support the growth take a look at my memberships link in the description below or just hit the join button at the bottom of the screen with that said appreciate you guys watching let's all make a lot of money on sofi